So my name is Sean Hogson, and uh, I'm going to kind of skip the whole intro thing. It's, you know, make Keith happy and not go through a big long thing. But I figured the first technical topic on day two, we kick things off with playing a game. Everybody good for that? Ah, good. Nah. <laughs> I was waiting for that community sigh. I was like, oh, my God. Uh, but I did want to ask a, uh, a couple quick questions. Is there anybody in here that was at the very first WLPC in Austin? Yep. How about the first one in Mostrek? Couple of us, yeah. So, uh, as we all know, it's the 10-year anniversary. So, nothing to do with my topic, but you know, I just wanted to give my thanks to Keith um, for putting this together, bringing us all together, and turning this into you know a, a, just a huge opportunity every year that we have to get together um, for the networking and and for the technology. So we you know we appreciate that very well. So, okay. So, what am I going to talk about? So, we're going to talk about six gigahertz roaming. Um, I tried as much as I could not to just bore you guys with empirical data. Um, it's kind of hard on you know, a data-driven test. But basically, we just wanted to look at what's the behavior now that we have six gigahertz, right? Um, and that amount of bandwidth that we have. So what we did was put together a series of tests just to look at what was gonna happen as clients start to roam when you start deploying six gigahertz. So we got three Wi-Fi 7 APs, set them up in an office. Uh, the client device was a Pixel 8. Uh, that's what we had available for it. And then we just put a single SSID on, on five and six, turned it on with WPA3, and then just you know start walking. Um, as you all know, this in here, just as a quick reference, uh, Mr. my esteemed colleague, Mr. Palmer, put this thing together from another design. But we tried to stay within you know, normal kind of channel utilization. So what we did was in a lab, we had a, just a simple setup, three access points in an office space. And this is what we use for the first round of tests. Um, this is, you know, as Jim likes to say, in the land of milk and honey in the US. So we had a wide range of channels. But we did keep that to what we would typically see in, in an enterprise. I don't know that a lot of them are gonna go with 320 megahertz wide channels, so we'll kind of run from there. I um, always like to open with a good quote. You know, I don't know if this one's famous yet or not, but I figured I would just do it and we'll see if I can make it famous from there. <laughs> so um, basically the first thing I did was I just lit one of the APs up and did a quick survey with uh, Ekahau and looked at what the coverage on the five gig radio was gonna be in that particular office space. And then did the same thing and looked at it in six gig. I know we've talked a lot about coverage differences and things like that, and what we saw was there is a significant difference using the same channel bandwidths and power levels between those two bands. So just think about that when you go to do that design and you, this is something that you definitely wanna kinda of test what happens. So um, in the first test, we did five gigahertz at 40 megahertz wide, six gigahertz at 160 wide to see what was gonna happen. And, and this is kind of small to see, but I'll run through it. This is using the Wi-Fi Man app from Ubiquity on an Android phone. You can see as the AP roams, or as the client roams, I should say, we go from six gigahertz here across six gigahertz, you know, nothing spectacular. It roams through all it, three APs and back to the original one. So that was kind of expected that it stayed on six gigahertz the whole time. What we found was if you do a setup like this where you've got your channel widths more than two steps, so going from 160 down to 80 would be okay, or 80 down to 40, but when you try to jump from 160 down to 40, the clients just, they don't like it. I've not gotten one to do that jump at all, right? So keep that in mind as you start to play with channel widths. Um, we talked about having different channel widths in your same environment. So I think at mobile field day or something last year it was, we, we brought that topic up and I talked a little bit about it with the AI driven RRM back in Phoenix that we would, we would suggest different channel bandwidths in different areas to handle the contention. But the issue with that is just making sure that you don't have two steps to jump across. So 
The second test was 80 wide and 80 wide, and the last one was 40 wide on five and 80 wide on six. And all three of these did the same thing. They just roamed across, they stayed on six gigahertz, they didn't move to five gig, there was nothing spectacular for that. Uh, for the fourth one, we did 40 wide on five and, and then 80 on six. And then what I had to do was I actually got into a room to get the attenuation to go low enough, and we'll show this, so that it would finally drop. And then right here, we roamed, I guess if you could call it a roam, we're on the six gig radio and we switched to the five gig radio. So on the same access point, it moved over from six gig to five gig on the same AP. And then as we got farther along, it jumped to the next AP and went back to six. So we went from six to five on the same AP and then from five to six on the next AP. So just depending on, on the signal and, and what the client saw on, um, on that move. And then the next one was six gig, 80 wide and six gig only. So this way we're trying to see how that roaming was gonna handle if we're doing six gig only, like we've talked about. Um, and a couple of people, I think Jim talked a little bit about it on the MLO stuff, but the 60 gigahertz or the uh, six gigahertz only SSID was very susceptible to what primary scanning channels you have, right? So in one instance, we didn't have the middle AP on a PSC and the, the client did not want to roam to that guy. And you can see that, oops, lost my mouse here. Basically what happens is the signal gets so bad and it just stays on it all the way down to well into the 80s, you can see here. And then finally, when we're right underneath the AP, I think I actually moved a couple steps past that access point, we got to roam to the next AP. So, this is something that I think we got to investigate a little bit more um, to look at, you know, when we're doing six gigahertz only. I think most of the time we, we've all kind of come to the conclusion that you want to have five and six both turned on on the same SSID and not just locking it down to one. And that's definitely what we saw when we did that. The performance was definitely worse on um, when it was on just six gigahertz only. So, so that's what we did back in the land of milk and honey. Uh, and then what I did was just to make sure we didn't have any issues when we come outside of the FCC regulations. And so for Etsy, I took two access points that were set to PROG, that were set to uh, check um, country code, and then did some very similar tests, um, but just kind of staying in that range. And in this instance, because we don't have the same amount of bandwidth here in Etsy regulations as we do in the US, I kind of limited to 40 and 20. So 40 on the um, six gigahertz and then down to 20 on a couple of the tests under the um, five gigahertz side. So we ran a couple of those. Uh, they all roamed really with no issues at all. It, you know, what we expected to see, again, same thing, you'll drop down your AP roams across. We didn't see any issues going back to the other AP. That all functioned, you can see at the bottom, it, you know, it all functioned like we expected it to. So there was really no difference between the different ranges other than you know, just different channel availability. You've got different power levels and things like that, but that wasn't anything that we were looking at. So the next one was turning on MLO. So we finally got MLO set up. We look at what's gonna happen when we do a connection. So this one was, was pretty interesting. So initially the client linked up just on six gigahertz and you can see that down here. Um, and then as we moved across, the signal dropped, we see another band pop up and then it roamed onto the second AP on an MLO connection. So we went from a single connection to an MLO connection on the second access point. Uh, and then it stayed you know, there as we got through, and then you can just kind of see the, the bandwidth as you go across. So that behavior I was able to replicate several times. I don't know if that was just the client that I was using. I was using a Pixel 8, like I said. Um, but I was able to do that no matter where I went, which AP I adopted or I, I um, joined first, it always joined that single connection. And then when I roamed, it switched and went to an MLO collection, connection. I can't explain that yet. 
Um, so that's definitely something that we've got to investigate a little farther. So then um, on the, one of the next tests, we finally got this thing, got it connected on an MLO connection. And then as we go across, we drop down and then you see this happen. Signal drops down and as just as I thought it was about to roam, it completely disconnected off of the network, dropped down for you know, a couple seconds, then it came back and connected and then it went to a single connection after that. So this was, I was able to replicate this a couple times. Once this started happening, I was able to replicate it multiple times where it would just go, if it got on MLO, it would just drop off like almost like just you got kicked off the network before it roamed onto the next one uh, and onto a single connection. So this was part of a, and you can see it just stayed single after that. Um, it wouldn't do anything. So this was part of the conversation that I had with Jim and said, you know, this is what I saw. This is what the client's doing. And this was Jim's response, basically. <laughs> Sometimes the clients just suck, right? So, uh, so we did notice that, I think, with the Pixel 8, we talked about that a little bit last night in the Wi-Fi 7 testing, is just that, you know, what's the firmware, right? The, the Pixel had some issues. Um, I think I'm running the version of firmware on my Pixel that has those issues, you know? So I, I saw weird things, either... I don't know if the connecting to just a single and then moving to double or being on double and then moving to single, I saw that same kind of behavior as well. So I don't know if that's part of just the firmware issue, but that was the only device that I had to test with at the time um, that showed it. We, we also did try to do some testing on the first part of it when we were doing the stuff in the, in the office. We wanted to test the transition mode. I know that came up yesterday in the security topic on um, WPA2 and WPA3 transition mode. But um, after digging through desk drawers and things, we couldn't find a client that wouldn't do WPA3. So when we were out there for that session, we just we couldn't test the transition mode because everything we had at the time would do WPA3 and it would just do that by default. So uh, we'll have to look, look into some more stuff for that. So what's next? Um, more, more, you know, investigations into the roaming and testing. So as we go back and we get prepared for Phoenix next year, uh, we want to add standard power into this, you know, for, for the U.S. and I think Canada is going to get it as well. Uh, but we want to add the standard power into the mix, right? How is standard power going to affect these things, right? Like we've, we've heard in a couple of the other sessions, you know, if the client doesn't do standard power, how is it going to react? What's going to happen with the roaming and things like that? So this is on the, the plan between now and, and Phoenix for next year to get ready and do some more kind of follow-up testing and, and uh, expanding that. So, and then... Um, Last night, for the people that were in the Wi-Fi 7 session, Jim kind of gave away the, the surprise on our little embarrassing story. So when we started the testing in the lab in Pistoria, one of the things we did is I had my Mac, I had a two and a half gig connection, and we were running speed tests to see, you know, over the air, just like we did yesterday. And we start running speed tests, and we're not getting anything over a gig. N nothing over a gig. So we start looking through everything. We're checking the configs on the controller. We're swapping APs. We're doing everything we, we can think of. I went even so far as instead of just running it to my Mac, I, I looked, you know, I'm connected at two and a half gig. We look on the switch where the Mac is at two and a half gig. We should be getting more than this, right? I even go through the pain of installing one of our uh, gateway boxes and putting a Linux test server on it plugged into a 10 gig fiber connection. Nothing. Can't get past a gig. So, um, at that point, we're like, there has to be something wrong, right? There, there, there's, what the hell is going on with this thing that we can't get this? So I think we even had a couple nasty you know, messages with our engineering folks about maybe it's an AP problem, right? What the hell is going on? And when it comes down to it, it was uh, you know, the patch cable. We, we found that in the setup that we had, in the little closet from the patch panel down to the switch, this, this is backwards, it shows for the test server, but the cable that was patching my laptop into the network was a one meter 5E cable. And what happened was 
when I plugged in my Mac, it came up at two and a half gig, no problem. So every, it looked like everything was working. But as soon as you ran that speed test and you put load on it, it would drop to a gig and you'd get nothing past it. And then when you start messing with it, it resynced back at two and a half gigs. So I, I can't, and I won't admit to how long we spent chasing our tails trying to figure this out between Jim and I. And it ended up being that little cable. Once we realized that that cable was a 5E cable, we pulled it out. And I think we put a Cat 6 cable in what we found there. And then it linked up. All of our tests started going through. We were actually able to push out to 2.4 gig for the speed test and and everything you know everything was fine across there so it was it was definitely one of those things that you need to consider the cabling right even though the specs say you know we can do 10 gig to this distance and all these kinds of things look at the cabling when you start going to these new high power ap's double check your cabling and test that stuff right because i was in an office only like I was two offices from the cabinet, right? So maybe a hundred feet total distance in that whole thing. But that one meter patch cable was causing the problem. We never saw it once we swapped over that, um, that piece. That's it.